Hello everyone and welcome to a introduction to the Interstellar Convergence event, the Doctor Who crossover into EVE Online. My name is Urschlag and we have information for new players as well as veterans in this very tutorial slash guide. Um, if you're a new player, you might want to check that video, which is linked somewhere um, here, which is going to bridge the gap between the new player experience the exploration career agent and uh, the event also i highly suggest you join the in-game channel in eve uh, called urschlag in order to get some uh, skill plans fittings and uh, support for the event if you're lost go to your chat box click on the plus sign enter urschlag same writing as on youtube and you will find some help that being said let's have a look at what the event has to offer the event starts on thursday the 13th january at 1100 utc and you will be greeted with a login campaign which offers alphas and omegas some skill points boosters skins and filaments which will be required in order to enter uh, the sites furthermore there is a agency event which allows you to collect points doing event sites or event tasks and uh, unlocks further skins boosters and uh, other things now in order to run the event you need filaments and you can get to these filaments two ways either you wait for them to pop up on the market or you are going to scan down the uh, event signatures in the known space all over the place called warp matrix convergence those are relic signatures and uh, you will find peculiar debris fragments in there the relic hacks you hack these and uh, the loot will consist of uh, BPCs plus materials which let you build these filaments there will be most likely other drops I do not know of yet so once you have a filament you will be good to go you can either go with uh, the top row on the screen, which are the exploration filaments, tier 1, 2, 3, uh, curious, enigmatic, and mysterious. The higher the tier, the harder the hacks inside of these exploration slash hacking filaments. On the bottom row, we got the combat signs, tier 1 to tier 3, the precarious, hazardous, dangerous, and perilous filaments. The higher the tier, the more shit in your face and the more... Um, stuff you have to bring slash tactics in order to beat them successfully let's have a look at what phenomena and things you will encounter in each or in both of the sites um, let's get a exploration filament up so once you are undocked and in a point in space which isn't closer than a thousand kilometers to a structure you will be able to activate the filament and enter the uh according site inside of uh, of this site you will be finding some bonus or positive phenomena which if you get closer than five kilometers they will explode and apply an effect on your ship in case of the bonus which looks orange in space and blue in your overview um, it will make your ship faster, you will be more agile, your shield regen as well as capacitor recharge rate is higher, and uh, you get faster module cycles, meaning more DPS plus turret tracking and missile explosion velocity is improved. So this is going to give you superpowers, which you might actually need in higher tier combat sites. If uh, you go on, you will also see penalties. They are purple in space and uh, indicated red in your overview if you happen to crash into one of these well you will be slower you will be less agile uh, your shield and capacitor regen will be really really bad plus module cycles are slowed down threat tracking missile explosion velocity will also be um pretty bad so don't uh crash into this um then you will find yourself uh the exit which is open at any time so if you come uh, to the conclusion that uh, the time is up sites have a timer 
which runs out after 30 minutes. If you're still in, no matter what, you will lose your ship and your pod. So make sure to get out of the site either, you know, when you're done before 30 minutes or just before the timer ends. Um, again, the exit is always open. You can leave whenever you want. That are the uh, phenomenas and information bits and pieces for uh, which consists or concern all sites and uh, we look at the exploration site a bit more in detail in there depending on the tier lowest tier you will find a uh, small relic the small relic hack has uh, 50 coherence on the core is a green hack then there is a medium hack that has 70 coherence uh, on the core which is still green there is a, a yellow hack that's the large relic with still 70 coherence and then in the uh, higher tier sites you will also find huge relic hacks they are red hacks with 90 coherence for the core and the top of uh, the list we got the massive relic container which has a coherence of 120 with the core and is also a red hack uh, it will be significantly hard -er than the uh, other hacks to complete keep in mind though the event does drop and offer boosters which increase specifically scanning and relic hacking uh, parameters they will be uh, a massive help in uh, in that regard just check your boosters and get an easy exploration experience with that one so those are the things which you will find in the exploration sites. As for the uh, combat sites, we have a um, couple of enemies you will find. Um, let's get started with... Oh, let's get started with uh, what you can actually put into a combat site. So um, you can see entrance is open for combat cruisers two of each race. We got the Omen, Karkal, Thorax, Stabber, Mauler, Moa, Vexer, and Rupture. No other vessel will be entering the combat sites. You can bring up to two people into this site, so random solo or bring a friend. The higher tiers will, will be significantly easier to tackle if you bring uh, somebody else. Um, what will we face in these combat sites? We will have a group of Daleks. The number of numbers of Daleks depends on what tier you enter, the initial group. And from tier two, the Daleks actually respawn. There is a respawn kind of interval of 30 seconds where the server decides will you get a group or not. There are two different group sizes. So every 30 seconds from tier two, the server will decide what to throw at you. Um, a lot of times in the lower tiers you will not get any spawn uh, every 30 seconds and it will be um, rather easy. The Daleks though, if they are in uh, bigger numbers, they will wreck you. They not only do a little bit of damage, they also suck your capacitor dry. So you want to keep these guys under control. As you can see, the resistance profile as well as the damage output, they are all even slash omni, meaning it doesn't matter what damage type you do and you yourself should have a flat resistance profile to uh, tank uh, these. Um, then we do have the boss of the site which is a saucer. In regards to resistances and damage same thing although um, the uh, behavior slash uh, damage is, is a bit different in regards to to how it hits you in the face so these saucers have a very very uh slow um fire rate meaning they hit you every i believe 30 seconds or something and if they do they hit you very hard also the closer you are the slower you will be because this saucer does have a grappler um slowing you down significantly and obviously you will get hit uh, harder it will be harder to out track the guns of the saucer if you are um close furthermore this saucer does spawn bombs guided bombs they will try to catch you they're pretty slow between 200 and 300 meters 
um, a second. If they hit you, they will um, do an extremely insignificant amount of damage, but they will neutralize some of your capacitor. So if you hit many bombs in succession, um, you might run out of juice and obviously die to die to the side. Um, that is uh, the saucer. This is also the entity you have to kill in order to get the loot. The Daleks themselves don't have any loot. There is one more thing in uh, in these sites, and that's the, the turrets. Uh, they appear from tier 2. There are none in tier 1 combat sites. These turrets will start firing right away when you uh, jump in and start moving or activate modules. And the higher the tier, the more of them do exist. The base amount of damage these turrets do is significant, and in the higher tiers you might want to deal with these early on in order to um, get to a stable situation in regards to the incoming damage and uh, your capacitor situation slash uh, tank capabilities. We will have a look at some of the positioning in regards to these turrets. Um, in a in a second so let's have a look at the the combat filament again there's one thing i have to mention the whole pocket this doctor who space is surrounded or enclosed by a sphere and the contrary to what the abyssal environment does this sphere when you go outside does not kill you when you exit the sphere at some point that sphere will actually teleport you back leave about 100 kilometers which makes it so that you're coming in from the other side so you exit the sphere on one side and you enter the sphere from the other side this behavior slash mechanics is pretty significant and important to uh, hit or successfully beat the higher tiers of the combat sites before we go to the higher tiers let's have a look at a alpha side run though first so if you're a complete new player um this is how the combat site is going to look like so we are activating our filament we're being thrown into the abyss the fit used as well as the skill situation is exactly what you get when you join that in-game channel and use the skill plan plus the suggested fitting for the tier 1 combat site. For new players, I suggest you are locking up the Daleks first. You kill these small things uh, while activating all the modules. The fit itself is cap-stable, so you don't have to worry uh, that you run out of juice. And you have a fair amount of tank there, so you should not really be in trouble. Uh, important though, remove the Daleks first. They will not engage right away, only after 20 or 30 seconds upon uh, engaging, they will actually shoot back. So remove them from, from the pocket. And after that is done, I suggest you enter an orbit around the saucer, which is uh, the remaining enemy of about uh, 10 kilometers. And uh, just keep shooting that guy. It will die eventually. As a day one alpha with this skill plan, which is fairly uh, easy on on uh, skill points required, plus uh, the fit provided, it will take about four or five reloads to kill the saucer, so it will take a while, but you will get it done uh, way before the uh, side timer actually uh, runs out. After the boss goes down, approach the, uh, the wreck and uh, loot uh, the spoils. That is the tier one alpha experience now let me have a quick look at a uh, tier two where we can see how the boundary uh, sort of works with the teleportation and especially the turrets you wanna you wanna remove in a tier two this is not necessary but it is an easy demonstration kind of environment so let's have a look at um, that one again we are activating the filament jumping into uh, the pocket, well, jumping is probably the wrong word. We are getting thrown or we fall into that Doctor Who space. And again, uh, we have the boss, the Daleks. Here in the higher tiers, I suggest you make your way to one of the 
bonuses, the, these blue buffs in space. While you're doing this, you want to start killing some of the Daleks if they are in range in order to reduce this uh, nuding pressure from, from the Daleks. And once you are within 5 kilometers or closer, you will get this uh, bonus that applies for exactly 60 seconds. And during these 60 seconds, you actually get things done. So um, I'm picking up the buff here and will then immediately align to one of the guns or gun groups in tier 3 and tier 4. The guns are not solo, they are uh, in, in groups of two. And there is a very interesting fact. These groups or the uh, solo guns in, in tier 2, they are positioned so that if you kill one of these guns and then exit the boundary where that gun was, that teleport back will actually put you on top of the other uh, gun or gun group. This is going to help significantly cleaning these up in the higher tiers where I believe it is absolutely uh, required in order to alleviate the base pressure uh, the turrets um, mean to, to the whole situation. The turrets have barely any HP so they're normally just um, one shot. After the turrets are down you want to clean up as many Daleks as fast as possible in order to stabilize and then enter an orbit around the boss maybe 10 kilometers and grind that guy down every time there are new Daleks spawning kill these and uh, you should be kind of good to go. All right that was the uh, tier 2 combat side of things. Let's have a look at a uh, tier 4 experience um, before I, I run that little demonstration I'm not sure if the balancing is what's gonna happen on the live server the vessel I was using is roughly 4 to 5 billion including implants and I tried to run a tier 4 solo with that cruiser let's have a look how that one um, that one went again we are jumping in to the uh, environment and uh, this is one of the takes I did a bit later in testing where I already knew I have to really follow the strategy as in kill the guns as fast as possible make use of a buff so here we are I'm approaching um, one of these buffs while locking up Daleks and killing as many of them as possible this time I'm using a caracal as you can see um, once I did touch uh, the buff I was um, aiming right away towards the uh, the guns, which are currently about 60 kilometers away from my vessel. Once the buff is applied, I run at about 2,500 meters a second, so the ship is pretty fast. Keep in mind, uh, the Daleks will be able to uh, keep up though, so continue killing them, as many of them as possible. As soon as you are in range of the guns, you want to switch and kind of time this killing of the guns and exiting of the boundary nicely so you well you don't accidentally miss the guns you really have to kill them in the first pass get teleported back and kill the uh, uh the group on the other side as you can see right there um let's uh, move a little bit uh, on here in the video later on unfortunately my my little ship got a bit overwhelmed the uh bombs which are nuding plus uh, at some point the numbers of spawning Daleks made it so that I couldn't keep up with uh, capacitor recharge and I uh, eventually kind of lost my my little ship here. Uh, I was trying to cling on to, to life but uh, it was just way too much so tier 4 solo cruiser is gonna be quite an experience and achievement especially if you uh, make it happen solo get a friend it's much more fun to uh, run these uh, scenarios and that uh, sort of concludes uh, the presentation thanks a ton for watching through this again if you have any questions or need some uh, fits for the higher tier of combat sites feel free to drop by with uh, twitch tv slash urshlog or watch this space for more youtube videos um in the meantime Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun. I'll see you in space. Bye-bye.